Hi everyone, I'm Richard. Okay, so I've been around a while now and there comes a point where you sort of think you've seen it all, where even new stuff kind of feels predictable. You know what's possible with technology, you know where the reasonable limits are and it takes something completely insane, utterly stupendous and usually extremely expensive to really open your eyes. So yeah, this beast here, the ASUS GX800VH. Well, it's all of those things, and yes, it did surprise me. So recently, I posted a video playtest of my Titan X Pascal powered desktop PC, and I was feeling pretty pleased with myself. In GTX 1080, I'd found a viable 4K GPU, but Titan X added additional frame rate and visual features in terms of the gameplay experience, it was, quite frankly, the state of the art. And then, well, then I replicated the test on this thing. And it's faster, noticeably faster. Okay then, so let's talk core specs. We've got an overclockable mobile Core i7-6820HK here. Quad core, of course. Should be good for 4 gigahertz, but this pre-production sample is at 3.8 out of the box. And that's fast enough for 4K gaming, that's for sure. But obviously it needs the GPU power to do that and it gets a surfeit of that via two GTX 1080s running in SLI. Now remember that Nvidia's Pascal chips on the mobile form factor of full fat desktop processors just with running slightly lower clocks but it's got all the CUDA cores, all the memory bandwidth, G5X memory modules, the works. So yeah we've got two of those 1080s in there that's backed up by 64 gigs, yes 64 of DDR4 clocked to 2.4 gigahertz, overclockable to 2.8 Storage, well, I've got a terabyte of PCI Express NVMe solid state storage here, and the speed is epic. So, even in terms of expansion, it's insanely comprehensive. Traditional USB 3.0, USB Type-C, it's even got the latest Thunderbolt. I used it as a mini DisplayPort output for taking our captures here, and that's fine. But there's HDMI 2.02. Gigabit Ethernet is standard along with microphone and headphone jacks, while on the other side we have even more USBs, an SD card reader, and even a socket for an external Wi-Fi antenna. The screen, that's an 18.4 inch native 4K panel. Highly responsive, no ghosting, the pixel density is utterly insane, complete overkill. Not that any resemblance of sanity actually matters at this point really. The GX800VH is all about ramping up specs to the absolute max. Now this thing comes with a liquid cooling dock but you can run the laptop on its own and of course you can run it from batteries too. Now GPU frequencies drop when it's not in the dock and I'd actually recommend disabling SLI if you're running from batteries. Performance is impacting but you're getting about 70% of the frame rates you'd get from having the system plugged in and that's pretty awesome actually. Just don't expect much in the way of battery life. Now, even on the desktop with the machine idle, the batteries do drain pretty quickly, but really, to get the system running at its absolute best, you do indeed want to dock it into this sort of nutso liquid cooling dock assembly here. This keeps GPU temperatures down to around 70 to 75 degrees Celsius, even when you're pushing the system hard. It also introduces overclocking headroom. ASUS reckons you can take the 1080s up to around 1960 megahertz and G5X up to 5200 megahertz. So yeah, for stability, the core estimate there, I'd say that's pretty good, but I had the RAM up to 5600 megahertz with no problem whatsoever. And yeah, memory bandwidth really does matter at 4K resolutions. But it's the performance you're here for, right? Well, let's start with a game that's kind of notorious for not scaling particularly well, Crisis 3. Well, we're doing pretty well here actually with a 64% improvement in performance at 4K comparing a single 1080 mobile setup to the SLI experience we've got here. And yes, we're faster than a Titan X desktop here, 22% faster actually. So can we actually get anything approaching a 2X increase in performance using SLI? Well, it's very, very rare, but it is doable. Assassin's Creed Unity hands in the goods almost every time we try a multi-GPU setup and it's no different here. 31.1 FPS with one GTX 1080, 62 FPS with two. Almost perfect scaling, 99.4% faster. And yes, we're 44% faster than a Titan X desktop setup. Yup, 
44%. So could we actually find any downsides to this setup? Well, Ashes of the Singularity requires you to turn off SLI to use its DX12 specific multi-GPU mode and the results there just weren't particularly fantastic. 15% faster than just one GTX 1080 and actually slower than our Titan X setup by about 5%. Okay, so benchmarks are one thing, but one thing I've been trying to factor is to kind of get a handle on the actual experience how can this hardware work for you from a gaming perspective? With a gaming laptop here, it's like a closed box really. You've got a 4K 60Hz screen, so ideally you want 4K gameplay running at a locked 60fps. Okay, so let's go back to The Witcher 3 with VSync on. And yeah, we are indeed locked at 60fps and the results we're getting here are significant. On the Titan X desktop test I did the other day, we saw frame rates here as the griffin strikes the ground and when using fire magic kind of dropped, it wasn't particularly stable. The issue here is alpha transparencies. They suck up a lot of GPU power and cause momentary dips below the 60 FPS threshold. And guess what? Well, if you haven't noticed already, the GX800VH is remaining locked at 60 FPS where the Titan wasn't. Okay, so let's return to Crisis 3 here. Now, this is an interesting one because in the jungle occasionally we do hit CPU bottlenecks where we don't on my desktop Titan setup. Now, fundamentally, I've got an extra 20% of i7 power there, but I can get a mostly smoother experience with this laptop. And to maintain 60 FPS for longer, I only need drop shading and shadows from very high to high. I had to fiddle more with the settings on the Titan to get equivalent performance here across the run of play. But the crowning glory of my time with this laptop, Rise of the Tomb Raider, very high settings here, 4K of course, very high textures. Now I was fluctuating between 50 to 60 FPS at 4K using the Titan X, even with an overclocking place. And I tried some minor settings tweak downwards, but there's no overclocking going on here. I'm locked at the very high preset and I'm getting smoother performance, 60 FPS for the vast majority of the gameplay duration and even cutscenes which could hit the desktop Titan hard than north of 50 FPS here. I've got to say that this is a simply phenomenal 4K experience. So overall then, I had a pretty great time with this behemoth. I'm pretty satisfied with my 4K experience with GTX 1080 and Titan X on the desktop, but what's clear is that the SLI setup in this beast is handing in better results by and large. It's a bit of an eye-opener actually, and for me it begs the question, just how good is SLI with GTX 1070 and GTX 1080 in their desktop forms? Well, ASUS has loaned me a couple of each, and I'll be reporting back on that soon. But as for this, this incredible piece of technology, well, if you have to ask how much it costs, the chances are you won't be able to afford it. Whether we're talking euros, pounds or dollars, we're in the thousands here. It's a state of the art in virtually every way. And yeah, with the liquid cooling, maintaining performance and enabling overclocking, it may well be the most powerful consumer level laptop in the world. Do I have any criticisms? Well, a G-Sync display would be nice but you're at 4K 60 Hertz in gameplay most of the time anyway, so it's not as much of a big deal as you may think. The liquid cooling dock there, it can kick off noise-wise when the system is really under load. And yeah, maybe an all metal case would have been nice. Quite possibly it would add even more weight, but right now it's only the lid that's metal. Okay, so look, there's tons more to discuss here. The mech tag mechanical keyboard, the RGB lighting, but I could be here all day. The point is, it's fast, faster than you can probably imagine. And yeah, for actual gameplay, SLI is paying off here. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there for now. Do like and subscribe to support Digital Foundry. Now I'll catch you next time.